for, lays out for managing a landfill cap. We've had engineers from two different firms come out and talk to us about what we can do with the cap. Of all the spectrum of options that they presented in terms of cap reusage, because this is a this is actually something that's happening all over the country, all over the state, in terms of reusing cap space because urban space is at a premium. There's not that much more land in Portsmouth that you can claim. So this is something that happens all the time. Of all the spectrum of uses, what we're proposing is by far the most minimal of possible uses, which is basically people can walk on it. Um, so uh, we're very comfortable with our proposed usage. Now I want to get, and this, this ties into what I want to uh, complete your final comment there. We haven't expended any money. What we've done is the due diligence enough to lay out a plan that we believe is realistic. So we have talked with engineers. We haven't commissioned in, in any engineering studies. Those engineers, be it for the cap, be it for traffic, be it for uh, water. So we've done our due diligence in terms of the 30,000 foot level of what we think is appropriate. Anytime you get to the next step in terms of implementation, absolutely, there's going to be a lot of uh, organs and council decisions to be made stepwise in each iteration over the next decade. Working through the Conservation Commission, working through traffic and safety, working through the council. So all those things are future steps. But you can't, you don't want to do it all, you know, uh, bit by bit, you know, uh, zigzag like that down the road. That's why you have a plan. So you want to have a conceptual plan so you have kind of a roadmap of where you want to go in the big picture, and then uh, you can tackle those individual things down the road. So that, that's our vision. And I, I want to finish up my comments uh, just responding to some of the comments that, um, and my overall theme for what this project's meant to me. The assistant mayor made the comment, uh, if we enhance it, then next thing you know, they're down the road, so there could be a hotel or some other commercial establishment down there, and that would destroy the neighborhood. Well, then we shouldn't enhance anything in Portsmouth. And that's the best way to preserve what we have. I, I don't understand that. I think, uh, I, don't, I don't follow that logic completely. I don't think that by enhancing a community-owned resource that necessarily falls that we're then going to rezone property and allow rampant commercial growth. I just don't think that's realistic. The second thing is um, something Council Morgan said about, you know, why do we have to open it up to everybody? I think one of the currents running through here is the concept of privilege. Right now, there are people who are privileged to access the property. They could be abutters. They could be the physically able. They could be people who have knowledge about it. There are a lot of people who don't have those privileges. Maybe they're not physically able to access the site. Maybe they don't know about it. Maybe they're not abutters. And they have to drive to it. So, I don't think it's, it, it, my philosophy, I don't think as a city, to have this publicly owned resource uh, accessible to the privileged few. I believe, and it's in our vision statement, which again, the council, as Council of Lowndes pointed out, the council agreed to, we're promoting universal access for all. And that comes in three ways. It comes to access beyond the abutters. It comes to access for those who don't have the physical ability to walk around the fence, walk the 100 yards down, to the cap to enjoy the meadow. And it comes to those who don't have the knowledge of where it is, how to get there, and not be scared away by a fence that says no parking. So I think that if having that theme of democratic with a small d, uh, community-owned resource is something that Portsmouth should rally around and be proud of. And so that's why I think this is a wonderful plan in that respect. Thank you. So I will recognize for the second time Councils Kennedy and Shaheen if they have new information. And after that, I want to take a motion. So, Council Kennedy. Um, I guess I just want to say why we're in the way I'm moving. And I agree to the plan. Um, however, I, I'm going to go with the process. What concerns me is if you have 200 people on a petition, that if you look at it briefly, when I went through here, we're, we're pretty close to the property who, for some reason, do not feel that they agree with this. And I guess my question is, do the council and the council are going to meet with these, these individuals on a personal level, not in a meeting format, <coughs> on a personal level? Um, and my fear of that is, is that we're going to create something through grants and, and, and whatnot. 
and then there's not going to be anyone to upkeep it. If you create a huge line of rails and, and, and walkways and paths, and you know, it takes a lot of upkeep. And you don't have the buy-in from the people around it. So I guess I don't want to shoot down this, but I want to say, when are we going to talk to the individuals? And what I heard tonight was access, time, concerns about the road, all things that can be figured out and found out. You know, how much transportation is on that road? What's the road? What's the capacity of that road? The only time I've gone to this is through the high school path. So maybe we advertise that way. That's not in here. Um, what I heard is how, how late is the park going to be open? That's pretty easy to figure out. Let's figure it out. And the other thing I heard is, who's going to take care of it? I heard trash cleanup. It's not even being taken care of now because there's trash there. So those are logistics things that I truly believe. You have 200 people that live around there that don't feel comfortable with this. And if you can't get them on board, then no one's going to up you because Yes, people will come from afar, and I can tell you this from sound. People will come from afar to visit, and they will love to visit, and they will access it, and they will leave their Snickers little package container on the side of the building. But it's people there that live with it, enjoy it, live it every day, they're going to really take the time to pick the Snickers wrapper up the pathway, to pick the cigarette butts up the pathway. I can tell you that, because that's what we have to do on Pierce Island. So, I guess, you know, I don't want to, sh I want to, I don't want to shoot this plan out, but I, I like the idea that there's accessibility, that, you know, we're looking at preserving some walkways, but my concern is you don't have the backing from the community for this plan to upkeep it once we build it. And so I'm not going to vote for it tonight. I hope it comes back to the next council with someone who sat down with these, these 200 people that had concerns and really address those concerns, which I think can be done without a huge amount of work from our community. Council Dwyer, can I just hear from Council Shaheed then I'll let you and Council Spears respond. Council Shaheed. So I have to say that I'm surprised by the amount of dissonance regarding this plan uh, for several reasons. One, when we look at the continuum of uses that could be explored for a parcel of this nature, on the one hand, this for a long time was being looked at for the new high school. And in the middle, you could imagine recreation fields where families would come all day, every day, every Saturday and Sunday for soccer tournaments and baseball and everything that goes on in the recreation field. And on the other end of the spectrum, from my perspective, relative to what we could create on a public piece of land that's 66 acres, right? 66 acres? that has the most minimal impact possible is what my interpretation of this <coughs> is calling for. Um, and you know, I, I, I have had the benefit of speaking with Roger and, and some of the abutters, and I appreciate the concern about traffic and wanting to better understand the traffic impact, because I certainly think any, you know, we have to be sensitive to public safety, and there are families with small children living there. I appreciate the point about the access and might we be able to encourage access to this parcel through the high school? That makes total sense, and we heard that we can, and there's a plan for how to do that. Um, so the idea that nothing ever is going to happen here and that's okay is one I want to challenge, because first of all, I don't actually think it is okay. I think we have you know, more vulnerability and risk to the preservation that we want to see happening there by not having a set of expectations for what's going to happen when the public is using the space, because we know they already are. Um, so I, I want to thank the, the committee that put this work together. I appreciate the outstanding questions that have been raised. I think there, this isn't a, a complete uh, plan, and now we're all done, and we don't have to address some of the ongoing questions that arise. I think there will continue to be room for improvement. Uh, but. I have to say, I'm, I'm, I am surprised given the amount of attention and the consideration for other uses on this parcel historically. Because when I look at this, I think how incredibly wonderful to be able to take a 66 acre parcel and not redevelop it and preserve what we want to, you know, preserve what we can, can for the wildlife in a better way than we're doing today. Because today, 
we're compromising the vernal pools and the wetlands by allowing people to walk through them. We're compromising the opportunity for preservation for the wildlife by letting dogs off leash. Um, so, it's, again, it surprises me to have had the reaction we've had, and I don't know how much of that is um, people's fears about some of the earlier proposals for what could happen versus what the actual plan says. What the actual plan says is we have a plan for preserving the 66-acre parcel and allowing light public use for the enjoyment of the outdoors. And so for that reason, I look forward to supporting it. So I'm going to let our Councilors Dwyer and Spear sum up. And we do have a motion on the floor. Yeah, I, Council Kennedy you did raise a question that we hadn't addressed before, which was that um, public works folks, uh, Peter Rice was, um, came to our committee fairly frequently, and they do realize that it will increase their responsibilities. Once we, once we take on this master plan, that public works will have responsibility for uh, more care for the site. The uh, high school cross country team already cares for the trails. We're not creating new trails, and so, um, that's an advantage we have on the site, but we already have some uh, caretakers for it. The, um, I think the important thing to say um, is that we have had a year's worth of meetings, and many of those were, cons were conversations with uh, numbers of people in the area. I think what you see happening is this, the concern, and you heard it reflected in, in, in Councillor Splain's um, concerns, that. Once someone comes to your door and tells you that there are going to be fields there and that there are going to be playing fields there and you haven't read the plan, you might believe that. Wait a minute. Excuse me. I, I, I said that. I'm, I'm not. Sir, you, you can't speak. I'm sorry. I, I'm talking about something that actually happened quite early in this process when people thought that because there were people who came to us who um, said they wanted fields there, that we were going to put fields. And that was um, quite clear in the public hearings that when they actually saw the plan, that it wasn't part of it. So I have no knowledge of what, what people thought they were against. I know the people who contacted me after they, someone came to their door and asked for clarification were glad to have the clarification and thanked me for the clarification. And you know how that goes. Um, these issues are complicated. People often don't have time to read the plans. They wouldn't have had a chance to see this presentation. Absolutely. Here, you're okay. So I'm going to pass the gavel, make a comment, and then we'll call for the. Thank you, Mr. Goodman. So I just like to say that I want to appreciate uh, let, let you know that I appreciate all the work that went into the committee, um, all the opportunities that did exist for public comment, and there's always room for more. I understand that, but I'd like to ask. Um, this is a question that is just to clarify everything we've been talking about. Um, and that is, this if we approve this this evening, this only means that we're approving, approving the plan, but we're going to get really into the weeds of that at another point, I mean, as far as specific plans and, and different activities that might happen there. Correct. As, as was stated numerous times, this is just the uh, public input stage of the whole process. What has happened here is the committee over a period of year has listened to people and their concerns about the property. Uh, David Moore has worked to try to put those together in a report which uh, is well documented. Uh, we have not invested uh, any substantial sums of money into going forward and we'll getting some direction from the city council. This is really the first step. The next step would be to then go and bring in and look at what we would do long term and, and probably bring, uh, utilize some money that had been set aside a few years ago uh, for this process. Uh, this has not been taken lightly. This has taken a few years to get to this step. Uh, so what will happen is next step will be to bring in a, uh, somebody to help and work with the staff that knows these types of uh, uses and, and how their best, their best practices are, are developed. And uh, that will be the next step. And, and as part of that next step, as we usually do, we will have public input on those. So it, it's not like tomorrow we're going to go down, tear down the fence, we're going to build a road, we're going to put a parking lot in. That's not going to happen. What this does and what this says to the city staff, it says, OK, we're now ready to go to the next step. We didn't want to go to the next step and spend the money until we 
already exhausted this step with all the great work of the volunteers. So that's where we're at right now. And next uh, phase will now be to bring in those experts that can give us best management practices in these types of passive uses. So it's very likely that the neighbors and the concerned citizens could work with the next city council and the staff to be able to work together to. That would be the next step is to now bring somebody in that can help us with this design and how we would manage it from a, a you know, public perspective. Thank you. So I'm going to call the question. Your, 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 your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to amend. Thank you. Like to make a motion to amend uh, the plan. Uh, that prior to opening access to the public, one, safety related to the cabin toxic materials be analyzed and addressed. Two, to incorporate a report back from the uh, Parking Traffic and Safety Committee as approved by the council at the time uh, with regard to the traffic along Jones uh, Avenue. And three, that a trash pickup strategy be in place. Motion to second. Basically, yeah, right, Your Honor. Yes, please. Uh, just on the um, issue on the cap, yeah. uh, we, we have requirements under uh, the law and under our consent decree that we, we, we follow uh, and we, we do uh, test for those things. So, <coughs> certainly, we will continue. We, we have a heightened sense of awareness uh, that when this opens, and again, it, it's already open. But when we uh, move forward in our best management practices and, and, and move forward in that direction, we will make sure that uh, that is fully vetted. And I don't think I need a motion of the council to, to, to tell me that, but certainly we'll follow that. Uh, and uh, you know, all those things I think we're going to vet anyways, council. But I certainly have no objection to them. I mean, uh, we're going to do that as a matter of good practice. So, Council Thorson, is he still looking for an amendment? Yeah, I like to okay, we have a second. I can, vote for, I can vote for this as the amendment because I feel I have some assurance. Okay, we need to see if the amendment passes. Yes, of course. Clarification on the amendment. Yes. The, the, the last part, Councilor Thorson, um, because Public Works recommended to us actually a um, a uh, carry in, carry out. Would that be included in the plan from them? Do you just want them Whatever to? Whatever the trash pickup strategy is, uh, it, because there was some talk about residents, there's talk about carry in, carry out, there's talk about trash bins. I think a lot of these things will come up again in the further right. discussion, but some plan has to be right. made for it. And I think, by my dear honor, um, this is an ongoing conversation in public parks. and. Uh, what we'll do is monitor it, uh, and, uh, and again, there may be a way to utilize uh, trash receptacles, but uh, that is something to be seen. That is something that really we're not talking about tonight. This was merely to get the macro of the future, and, you know, and, and the best management practices we'll be discussing as we retain somebody to work with us that helps us in this area. And, I, and I'm, okay, I'm okay to call the question on this, too. Good night. I'm going to call the question. Well, the question. The amendment. Um, the amendment. Um, the amendment. Then I'm going to ask for a roll call vote, please. On the amendment. On the amendment. Yes. Council Shaheen? Yes. Council Kennedy? Yes. Council Brown? No. Council Dwyer? Yes. Council Morgan? Yes. Council Spear? Yes. Council Thorson? Yes. Mayor Lester? Yes. And that passes. Okay, now we're going to go to the main motion and roll call vote, please. No. Council Shaheen? Yes. Council Kennedy? No. Council Brown? Yes. Council Dwyer? Yes. Council Morgan? No. Council Spear? Yes. Council Thorson? Yes. Mayor Lester? Yes. Motion passes 16. Okay, thank you, everyone. We're going to take our about a six or seven minute break. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.